Welcome. I am the Reverend Dave Clements. I serve this congregation as the interim minister. Extend a special welcome today to those of you who might be joining us for the first time. Those of you who maybe have joined us before and, and are back again. And especially welcome to those of you who are members and friends of the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. If you'd like to know more about our faith, we invite you to go to our website and click on information and there you'll find more information in regards to how you can join, what you can find out about what we believe, and also um, send an email in that, so we can send information back to you. We're always aware and thankful of those who've gone on before and the land in which our building sits. And we again pay tribute this day to those of the, <clears throat> of the uh, Indian nation who have sacrificed so that we might enjoy the place in which our building now stands. And now Linda, Reverend Linda, let's find out what's happening this week in our church. I always get the feeling when I'm doing announcements that I want to sing that thing we used to do at camp, announcements, 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 but I won't. Um, there are many ways for you to connect during the week. On Wednesday evening at 7 for Joys and Sorrows, 7 p.m. on Thursday for Adult RE, and we are looking at some TED Talks, so those are always good. And Friday mornings, join us at 9.30 for muffin and coffee chat with the ministers. This Wednesday evening, by way of Zoom, the ministers will be conducting an online memorial service. We have had so many losses this year from our church and family, and so this service will be a way for us to come together and collectively honor these unique individuals. All our invites, all are invited, and a Zoom link will be sent out this week. On Friday at 11 a.m., the ministers by way of Zoom will conduct an online, memor online memorial service for Bob Ryan, Barbara Ryan's husband. We will send a Zoom invite later this week. And we invite you all to register for General Assembly this year. Instructions on how to do that are in the builder. GA will be 100% virtual this year, and the cost is $150. Coffee hour today will be our annual meeting. 
please plan to attend online. Next year's budget will be presented as well as new members of the board for you to vote on. So we need you to be there. The annual campaign wants to help make sure that 70 poor people or more, 74 as a quorum, attend the June 14th meeting. Team will be offering two prizes. Hi, I'm Suzanne Berkey. And I'm Ron Berkey. And we live in Sedona, Arizona. Blessings on those staying home. We're staying home. Love has never asked this of us before. We're staying home. This is our gift to humanity. Let us wish each other well. For those staying home alone, I offer you this blessing. May you grow a deeper understanding of your own worth. Dear one, leaven the aloneness with gentle care, for this too shall pass. May you be blessed with a peace and serenity. May you find the courage to reach out to hear another's voice and to remember others need you too. And may you be well. For those staying home together, I offer you this blessing. May you find moments of patience and grace in your relations. May you offer each other enough time apart, reassurance and space enough to cry, to safely rage, for this too shall pass. Then let peace come again into your home. May you see one another's whole self as a gift. May you be well. For those working from home, I offer you this blessing. May you remember to take breaks. May you find the means to relish your imperfection and the imperfection of others as evidence of your shared humanity. You are enough, even when there isn't enough. Make order in your days and then let it go. May you be well. For those staying home with children, I offer you this blessing. May you find humor and compassion in your days. There will be learning of a different kind, deeper, no doubt, unexpected for sure. May there be patience and forgiveness again and again and again, for this too shall pass. May you all remember the deep love that brought your family into being. May there be peace and understanding in your home. May, May you be, be well. well. May, May we be well. well. May, May it be so. so.
Good morning. I'm Sue Swanson. I'm a member of the annual campaign team. Back in January, when our team first met and decided that the theme for this year's pledge drive would be dawn of a new day, we had no idea the twists and turns that awaited us. The dawn in our minds would be the hiring of a new settled minister. And that was excitement and change enough. We planned to go to the congregation as usual and ask for pledges because 80% of our funds come from our members. But then all of our lives took a turn and COVID made the unforeseen the routine. Instead of our usual face-to-face -face fellowship, we had to revert to virtual. Thanks to our ministers and staff, a wonderful tech team and many behind the scene workers, our church life was able to proceed. Just knowing that there is a church family to count on in these turbulent times is a great comfort. When I first started going to the UU Church, I was so impressed by the welcoming feeling I felt the minute I walked in the door. People genuinely cared who I was and if I showed up. There were groups to join. There was a vibrant RE program to engage our youth, the future of our church. A very social, active justice committee acted upon what they believed. I met with people with common interest and attended book discussions and music concerts. And oh, the music, not just traditional church music, but jazz, classical, folk, choir, vocal, instrumental. I had finally found a church home. I think in these uncertain times, we may all need a refuge and the friendship of each other. It all takes money. As life moves on and people move on and unexpected obligations come along, it puts pressure on our fundraising efforts. Even with cuts to the programs, we are still behind. So if you haven't pledged yet or can see a way to increase your pledge, please give it some consideration. If you've never pledged, we would ask you to consider making a donation in an amount you feel comfortable with. And we thank all who have already done so. We're all in this together. And although we've had some economic setbacks, this is a great opportunity to rebuild with the coming of Reverend Jennifer. We need your participation in our church's min mission of making the world a better place for all. Let us do what we can to make this dawn of a new day a very meaningful one.
Today's chalice lighting is by a colleague, Reverend Jay Wolin, and it's called Letting Go. Are we a people of holding on or of letting go? Holding on to rigid ideas or letting go and opening our minds and our hearts to something new. Holding on to certainty of how things should be or letting go and living with the uncertainty of new ways of being in the world. Holding on to what makes us comfortable or letting go so we may grow which can be uncomfortable. Holding on to what makes us safe or letting go to make room to help others feel safe. With this flame, this symbol of our religion, let it be a symbol of burning up the ties that hold us back from being our true self and reaching our true potential. Let it be a symbol of lighting a new way for us into a better tomorrow. And let it be a symbol of letting go because holding on too long and too tightly is never good for the soul. Today we have a, a, something special, something uh, that honors people of this congregation. I would like to introduce Joyce Rosenberger, who is the vice president of the board. And she is going to tell us about the ways that we are recognizing people in this congregation for their gifts of service. Good morning. I'm Joyce Rosenberger, and as board vice president, I chair the recognition committee. Thank you to members of this year's recognition committee, Sarah Allen, Amy Pop, 
Nancy Rakoff, Shar Ricky, and Nancy Venzon. Volunteerism is the lifeblood of our church. All contributions, no matter how small, benefit our beloved community. Each year, we recognize those volunteers nominated by members and friends of our congregation who have been doing so much to advance the work, activities, and mission of our church. Committees do much of the work of our church. A huge thank you to our outgoing committee chairs. Sherry Waisner has been the dedicated and hardworking chair of the worship committee for 20 some years. Tom McIntyre has chaired the Communications Committee for several years. Bernie Humphrey has been chairing the Hospitality Committee, bringing many loyal volunteers into this helpful circle. And a big thanks go to all of those who have nominated volunteers for recognition. The Church Mouse is our first group of awards. The Church Mouse is a recognition awarded to a member or friend who works tirelessly behind the scenes, quietly contributing to the well-being of the church. Keith, Mary, and Cinda Thompson have been so helpful in getting the builder out. Keith does the layout and Cinda does the editing. Cinda also assumed responsibility this year for facilitating a covenant circle. Anthony Baudrill, when we were physically in church, took care of the sound system during one church service a month and was available in the office one Sunday a month. Carol Cahi has become one of those dedicated people helping so much in coffee hours. We all appreciate the coffee and treats and it takes volunteers like Carol to make this happen. Pat Denzer has been busy sewing banners, one for the front of the church and a new large one to be carried in regional and national meetings. Pat also is a dedicated facilitator of a covenant circle. Adam Gudat has assumed the care of Bonnie's garden by the back entry to the atrium. These beds delight us as we enter the church and Adam tends them faithfully. Bernie Humphrey has been the tireless chair of the hospitality committee. Although she is passing along that baton, she has now volunteered to co-lead music ministry. Bernie helps in the church garden and has even volunteered to pull poison ivy. Helen Martin purchases bird food and maintains the bird feeders behind the fellowship hall. It is a pleasure to enjoy seeing the birds feeding with the backdrop of our woods. Two new church members have become involved volunteers. Bill Ordaz proposed the idea for a video presentation for the annual campaign. He wrote the script, recorded it, and edited it. Tim Harold has taken on the task of picking up trash on our church property. Just like a church mouse, we may not see him at work, but we see the results. Emily Smuzrud has become a member of the Communications Committee and is doing a fantastic job of keeping our Facebook page and website up to date. Our next group of awards are the Above and Beyond Awards. The Above and Beyond Award is to acknowledge a member or friend whose one-time or ongoing volunteer service goes beyond the regular service expectations of the church. Galen Fadley is one of the leaders of the tech team who make possible the successful Zoom congregational meetings. For the May 3rd congregational meeting to call our new minister, Galen spent many hours helping to develop the ways to manage technicalities of the meeting and the details of voting. Galen is part of the committee working on planning for safely returning to our church's physical space. He has been the facilitator of the Sunday Covenant Circle for many years, and he was an active member of the church board prior to the arrival of his two young sons, who now keep him and Tricia very busy. Amanda Franklin 
is a key member of the annual campaign committee, composing much of the written correspondence, designing some of the graphics, bringing her fundraising expertise to the planning, and volunteering to make calls and send emails to potential donors. In addition, Amanda is a highly active member of the Children's RE Committee, spent countless hours serving on the Ministerial Search Committee, and is mom to two young children and holds a full-time job. Her cheerfulness abounds and she is always ready to lend a hand. Carol Lowe has long been a member of our church's phenomenal caring committee. Carol's generosity is reflected in the many acts of kindness she shows members and friends. Whether it is making a phone call, sending a card or flowers to let someone know they are thought of, or initiating purchase of gift cards to be given to members and friends in need, Carol can usually be found. Carol assists with memorial services, is co-leader of music ministry, and was also instrumental in organizing a series for end-of-life decisions. Ruth Rademacher and Sandy Meskimum took on the monumental job of moving and reorganizing the church library. Sandy has maintained the library for many years and for several years organized our church's volunteer participation in loaves and fish. Ruth has been maintaining the church's bulletin boards. She saw the potential of expanding the use of the library by moving it to a larger room. Ruth and Sandy packed up the books, reorganized, expanded the library, and held an open house for church members to be introduced to the new library space. Ruth keeps us informed about interesting books with builder articles, and she obtained a grant through the UU Mid-America region for purchasing books dealing with social justice issues. Mary Ann Chin is the person who keeps the book corner of the Fellowship Hall neat and organized. She's a dedicated worker at all our book sales. Often, she can be seen in the kitchen, helping with coffee hour and other meal events. And last Christmas Eve, she took over hosting the after-service cookie and wassail time. And now, she has stepped into being the hospitality chair. Jean Sloan has been the adult RE chair for many years. She brings insight, depth, and variety to the Thursday night discussions of books, religions, societal topics, using a fund of resources such as Great Courses videos, TED Talks, and YouTube presentations. Jean is leading the hashtag UUTheVote in our church has led a Buddhist group within the church and leads Peoria Indivisible Group, keeping those on the mail mailing list informed of news and activities for involvement. A special award this year is the Future and Beyond Award. This award goes to the Magnificent Seven, our Ministerial Search Committee. Lindy Peterson, Chairperson, Kathy Carter, Linda Fairbanks, Amanda Franklin, Mary Cooster, Austin Locke, and David Wiesner. These seven have spent countless hours, month after month, learning UU search activities, preparing and entering our church data into the minister search portal, weighing possibilities, visiting congregations, preparing the candidating virtual experience, and helping to manage a congregational Zoom meeting. Their hard work resulted in the successful call to Reverend Jennifer Innes and her acceptance of that call on May 3, 2020. A special shout out goes to Lindy Peterson, who did a great job of chairing the committee and is part of the tech team, making sure the Zoom congregational meetings work well. We, a grateful congregation, thank all of you for your work, which will take us into the future. The Exceptional Volunteer Contribution Award is a new award this year to recognize a church member who has been giving outstanding service to the church, but does not meet all the requirements for the Outstanding Service Award. The nominee must be a church member with a history of church volunteerism 
which is exceptional, consistent, and significant in achieving the mission of the church. Austin Locke has been making an exceptional contribution to our church through his consistent work in making our virtual church services possible. Austin is an active member of the Communications Committee, and he recently updated our website to make it mobile device friendly, a tremendous amount of work. When the coronavirus struck, it was Austin who figured out how to stream our services on Facebook and YouTube. He videotapes on Saturday, edits and compiles all the elements, the music, the sermon, all the people who spoke, and puts it in a cohesive program and streams it on Sunday. He is now training others to be part of this important work. Austin and Galen Fadley, along with Lindy Peterson, spent hours planning for and leading a team to orchestrate the successful Zoom congregational meeting, which resulted in the calling of our next settled minister. Add this to his work on the search committee and the communications committee, and he sang in the choir, and you can see why Austin Locke is very deserving of the first ever Peoria UU Church Exceptional Volunteer Contribution Award. And finally is the Outstanding Service Award, which is in memory of Jack Fott to honor his unselfish, long-standing gift of time and talent. Nominees must be a church member with a history of volunteerism within or on behalf of the church for at least five years, facilitate volunteer service of others, volunteer services in the community, and adhere to UU principles in daily living. This year, for the Outstanding Service Award, we recognize Rick Growey, who has been an involved member of this church for many years, being announcement person par excellence, chair of social impact committee, participant in fun events, and master of ceremonies on many occasions. In September 2015, Rick became one of our ministerial assistants, spending at least 12 hours per week working on many varied and important projects. Some of the more noticeable projects include arranging for and organizing the visit of Bishop, Bishop Spong to our church on April 9, 2016, to present a community lecture on one of his thought-provoking books, researching the value of the entablatures we save from the old building and successfully selling them, researching the installation of solar panels on the church and raising the money to do so. Rick negotiated contracts, worked with contractors, and saw the project to completion, saving the church about 40% on our heating bill. Arranging for the placement and installation of the Redbird sculpture donated by the Cotterman family. Exploring our church being a sanctuary church for immigrants awaiting asylum hearings. When it was realized our church did not have the right facilities, Rick began donating his legal expertise to consult pro bono with immigrants. He also gave speeches to community groups on immigration and the rule of law. Mediating disagreements between church groups, helping draft church policies, and working with a volunteer to establish a church service directory co-chairing the Interim Search Committee, and serving on the Interim Ministry Transitions Team. Rick has also volunteered in the community, speaking in OLLI classes and leading study groups, assisting other churches in learning about solar panels and assisting immigrants. He has also volunteered overseas, working pro bono in Moldova for six months to promote the rule of law. In November, Rick and Ann, also an active volunteer in the church and community, moved to Colorado. They continued to support our church and recently gave the opening words on one of our virtual church services. Rick and Ann, thank you for your years of volunteer service to our church and community. Congratulations to all of our award winners and thank you to everyone 
who volunteers time and talent to the work of our church. Good morning. Today we are exploring passages. Passages can be exits or entrances, a road or path on which someone travels. Our lives are made up of passages that we find and ones that find us. But every passage eventually offers a choice about which way to go. Our story today shares one suggestion as to how to make those choices. It's called the compass. I hope you know what a compass is. A compass is a tool that helps people find their way around the earth. Perhaps you can Google it and see some images and learn how to make one on your own. Now, before the compass came about, people were still traveling about without getting lost because nature does offer some natural direction finders of its own. For example, flowers always face the sun, even when it's dark and overcast. And the bark on trees will be thicker and the cracks will be closer together on the north and west sides, while the branches will be thicker on the south and east sides. But even though there were natural direction finders, people long ago wanted an even easier way to find and follow directions. And finally, some clever man in China discovered just that. He discovered that a piece of a certain ore, when put on a piece of wood and floated on water, would turn until one end of it would always point in the direction that everyone knew was south. And he knew that if one end always pointed south, then the other end had to be pointing north. As soon as he knew north and south, pointing halfway between them gave him the direction east to the right and west to the left, and he was ready to find his way anywhere. And since then, we've had a very good tool to help us find our physical position in the world. Now, Something that people haven't yet discovered is a perfect tool to help us morally position ourselves in the world because we don't have a tool as simple as a compass with which to point our heads and hearts in the right direction to make wise choices about which passages to follow in our lives. We do have some natural direction finders of our own like our family, friends, and church. But wouldn't it be nice to have one simple tool for the job to help us make those hard decisions? Well, I would like to suggest that we you use do have at least one simple tool to use, and that's our seven principles. In our kids' rainbow principles language, they are respect all beings, offer fair and kind treatment to all, yearn to learn, grow in spirit and mind, believe in your ideas and act on them, insist on peace, freedom, and justice, and value the connections in creation. So, if you're ever lost when you have a tough decision to make, and you don't know what to do, try looking to our UU principles to help guide your way. They might just be the compass that you need to put you on a rightly guided path. So be it. And may we all have an attitude of gratitude. We have a lot of people to thank for helping in the production of, of the service. Of course, the Berkeys for sharing their time with us. It's great to see their faces again. We thank Amy for her stories. Also, uh, Joyce Rosenberger for producing our recognition segment. 
And we have some new people to thank today who have joined the production team along with Austin. We have Linda Fairbanks and Anna Rosenberger who are going to be doing the post-production work, which is so important to have a team that does this work. And today, we light candles of love and support today for Ron Love, who is currently hospitalized. We also send our congratulations to our annual campaign team who have given of their time, talents, and support to lead a stewardship campaign during these difficult times. And something very special, an honor that has been given to one of our members who spends most of her time in the children's wing, Dr. Channing Petrak, received Special Achievement Award. That was the headline. On March 5th, Dr. Petrak was presented with the National American Academy of Pediatrics Special Achievement Award for her leadership and advocacy in revising the Sexual Assault Survivors Emergency Treatment Act. These efforts include the creation of approved pediatric health care facilities, programs specializing in the unique needs of pediatric sexual assault victims. The award was presented at the Illinois chapter of AAP's annual conference reception at Northern Illinois U University in Naperville. So a, a wonderful award, and we are so fortunate to have Channing as one of the people that helps our children. In today's spoken meditation is Let Go by Lois Van Leer. Let go of all the ties that bind you, of all that burns you, of what you carry, of all the shames and the fears, of trespasses and transgressions, of woundedness. Let go of guilt. Let go of anger. Let go of small-mindedness and pettiness of ways of being that no longer work for you, of compulsions that consume your living. Let go of what you cannot change. Let go of regret of that which haunts you. Let go of pain. Let go of ways in which you miss the mark. Let go. Our offering today is entitled, The Form of Love We Call Generosity, and it's something that I wrote this week. Each weekly service, we take an offering to help sustain the work of this church. If we were together, we would pass the plate. It's always been a ritual, and the purpose of that ritual is a reminder of that form of love that we all call generosity. So I'm asking you, even if your pledge is paid, it is worthwhile for you to make a donation today as a ritual reminder of the form of love we call generosity. Let it be a reminder that after our meeting all our obligations to ourselves and our households and to the communities to which we belong and are committed, we must still keep our capacity to give. The practice of giving until it is second nature and first response 
helps bring forth the realm of love. Our offering, I invite you now to give, and it will be greatly received. And how can you make your offering today? This can be done by sending in a check, going to our website, making a financial pledge, hit the donate button, or by texting and calling 833-484-0328. Wait for the prompt and follow the instructions. And we thank you for your generous donations. We have introduced a new feature called History Moment. And for this service, Martha Herm is going to talk about our history at Herm Farm, where we normally would go for our annual picnic. So Martha. Good morning, everyone. I'm really sorry I can't be with you in person and be welcoming you to our farm for the annual church picnic. It has been my pleasure and honor to host you for the picnic for at least 35 years. This farm has been in the Herm family for five generations. It was a pretty hard scrabble place at the beginning from what I understand because the soil is not rich, a lot of gravel and clay. So my parents decided to change it from a working farm to a place to entertain family and friends. So for example, where livestock used to run, they dug it out and formed a 10 acre lake. And I know at the picnic, a lot of you enjoyed fishing and swimming and boating in that lake, or just sitting beside the lake and enjoying the scenery. Well, Tom and I really look forward to the time when we can share the farm again with you and host the annual church picnic. We hope that day comes soon. This has probably been the most unusual year in our entire history. But this year, though unusual, has been full of joys, full of sorrow and concern. And we would like to take just a few minutes to show you our year in review. Thank you to everyone who has participated today in uh, hopefully uh, in your vision of what this day would be, you envi in, are envisioning us being out at the farm. I wanted to take just a brief moment, talk about passages, because 
as a congregation, as a country, as individuals, we are experiencing passage. When I think of passages, I think of an experience I had with my daughter when she was learning how to drive. And because I knew it would be an unusual experience, I decided to videotape the event. And as I videotaped the event and afterwards we were looking at it, I could tell that she was some quite saddened and complex. And I asked her, what is wrong? And she said, by driving it means that I'm getting older and I don't want to get older. And we talked about that and we had a discussion and I explained how you have to grow in life. You have to do things that help you fly, that help you learn. And I talked about a butterfly, how it has to go through hard things to struggle, to break free from its chrysalis, to be able to fly. And we talked about how it's not a bad thing to learn and grow and that life is like that. You grow from one growth challenge to another to another and life is a passage. A passage to better things that help us to grow to become better people. And as I look back on my time here, it has been a passage. It's been a passage for all of us as we've grown together, as we've become better people, as we've learned. And now, as we close one chapter, and you're about to open another, may you remember the things that you learned during our time together. And may you take them with you into this new passage in this congregation. It is an honor and has been an honor to be here with you as we've neg negated and gone through this passage together in these last 18 months. I bless you. May you take joy and celebrate in the wonderful people that you are, in the work that you have done, and in the work that you continue to do. May it be so. Our closing hymn will be a treat from the Morehouse College, and then we'll have closing words by the Reverend Linda White.
And as the service comes to a close, I would like to interject just one thing, and that is a thank you for the care that you've shown, the energy that you've shown, the prayers that I know have gone out in this difficult time after the death of George Floyd. May we grow as a nation. And our closing reading for today is by Michael A. Schuler. We have reached the end of this time for the gathering of memory and for letting the imagination play with future possibilities. We have enjoyed magic moments and edified each other. Shall it be concluded then? Or will this adventure now commenced continue? Our separate paths converging, meeting, merging in the unending quest for love more perfect, the joyous struggle for meaning more sufficient and life more abundant. Is this the ending to be an ending? or merely prelude to new, more glorious beginnings? I pose the question in your hearts lie the answer.